Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be speed painting Glario Van Alten III from Warhammer Quest Cursed City. This is the second of two Blade characters, the other one being Amelda Braskov. We painted her in a previous video. As with all of my other speed painting videos for Warhammer Quest Cursed City, I have started with a spray undercoat of army painter Matt White. And once that's dry, I'm moving on to a coat of lead belcher over all of the metal areas. On this miniature, there is a large pauldron. I'm going to put lead belcher on the gun or almost all of the gun except for the wooden stock. I'm going to put it on the detailing on the sheath of his sword. And also he has a breastplate. You could perhaps put it on his boots as well. I didn't do that. I didn't want those to have a metallic shimmer. But really anywhere that you would like to have a metallic finish, apply this lead belcher. And of course I am thinning the lead belcher slightly. You may need to do two coats. It depends on the coverage and what kind of result you're going for. And I'm trying to be relatively neat here, but it doesn't matter too much. If you overpaint anywhere, you can always use a little bit of Army Painter Matte White to clean up the edges afterwards. Next, I'm moving on to Grave Lord Grey, and I'm going to apply this over the breastplate on this miniature. I'm going to apply it all over the belt buckle and the belt, and then I'm going to apply it to the leather padded section on his tunic. If you want to, you can also put this over the gun, over the pauldron, the other metal areas, but I'm going to use a different colour on those areas to get a more coppery finish. And the colour in question is hardened leather, so that will go over the gun, it will go over the sheath of the sword, and it will go over his pauldron, but also the tunic and his jacket has a fur trim, and I'm going to do all of that trim with this particular colour. I did um and ah about which particular colour to use here. I think hardened leather was the best of the options I had available, but go with whatever colour looks good to you. But as you can see here, I am now applying the hardened leather to the pauldron. That will give it a nice rich coppery colour, which I really like and I've used quite a few times on other miniatures as well. Next, we're going to Crusader skin and obviously this is going to go over the face and the head. And I'm going to put this on quite thin. I don't want it to have a really deep coloration. I'm trying to keep him looking quite pale. Then I'm switching to Pallid Bone. I'm going to put this on the little skull brooch on his jacket. Obviously that skull brooch isn't a real skull, but I thought it might be like a little ivory pin or something. So I'm using the Pallid Bone for that. I'm also going to use the Pallid Bone on his shirt sleeves. Then I'm switching to Holy White and I'm going to apply this to his moustache, his beard and his hair. He actually has darker hair than that on the official painted miniature, but I actually like the look of the white hair already, so I just applied the Holy White to give it a bit of shading. Next I'm using High Lord Blue, which is a colour I have never really got really good results with and I still continue to tinker with it. But this is going to go on one of the sashes coming off of his belt. And one of the reasons I'm using High Lord Blue is because I also have another new blue colour that I've never used before, and I want to apply that to the second sash to compare them directly on the miniature. But before we get to that, I'm using Grim Black. And this is going to go on his boots, and it's also going to go on his gloves. So I'm just covering the whole area of the boot. And he is looking quite dark at this point, but I'm going to use a brighter colour on his jacket in a moment. But here we just need to be careful not to go over any of the tunic or anything else. Then we are switching to that new blue I mentioned, which is magic blue. And I'm going to apply that to the second sash. I'm also going to put it on the glass part of the mirror hanging on his belt. And as I said, I just wanted to see these two blues side by side on the miniature. Magic blue is a much lighter blue, but it seems to have a much nicer coverage. And um, I'm looking forward to trying it on some other miniatures eventually. But now we need to go on to the jacket itself and I'm going to use blood red for that. So I'm just going to very carefully apply that around the skull brooch and then all over the buttons that have already had a little dab of lead belcher on them. And then just right up to the edges on the fur trim to give him a nice bright red tunic, which is in keeping with his flashed personality. And with that done, we're actually finished on this miniature. You will notice that what I have done in a few areas is 
avoid painting little details in different colors. I feel that when you're using speed paints, sometimes it's better not to try and pick out every little detail in a different color, relying a little bit more on the speed paints to pick out all of the details and definitions. However, the one thing I do wish I had done was to pick out his belt buckle in a brass or gold instead, just for an extra pop of color on the front of the miniature to break up that rather large area of gray and black on the front. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with how this one has turned out. It's not my favorite miniature anyway, and I wanted just to get some paint on it, get it done as quickly as possible, which is what Army Painter Speed Paints is all about. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.